Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a little bit more of an end game update to the Righteous Fire Inquisitor. Now this is by no means going to cover any form of min max gear, but just kind of like some things you want to be aiming for. So in the previous video, I showed you guys I was using Profane Proxy uh, in my left here for my Skitterbot to apply flammability. Now I would normally still keep running that, but I did get a massive damage increase in my helmet, uh, and I've been face tanking a lot of high tier chaos monsters uh so i have dedicated a pure chaos resist ring basically i mean it could be better but basically puts me at 61 chaos res and since it's just so hard to see what is going on sometimes in poe it just really helps mitigate against the chaos uh if you want more damage obviously just keep using profane proxy and then the 39 decks on here helps me respect this dex node and our next big damage cluster source is going to come from a master of fire cluster notable here um uh, and once I get that, I'll make the video on that. So moving forward, I have moved my Scorching Ray to my six link chest piece. So exact same chest piece. Um, my links are currently Scorching Ray, Efficacy, Control Destruction, Life Tap, Burn Damage, and Infused Channeling. I would run Ellie Focus over Efficacy, but Efficacy increases the duration of the Infusion. Infusion is a big damage increase for our Righteous Fire. So like if I redo it here, it's six seconds. Whereas with Efficacy, it is eight seconds. That's kind of why I'm doing that. Specifically because of Infusion, I also want to get an Enlighten and min-max my auras so I can drop Skitter bots and run Malevolence with an Enlighten uh, so I have like a 10-second Infusion rather than um, rather than an 8-second. And that'll just help a lot with single target as well. It'll extend the duration of Scorching Ray, uh, which kind of makes up for the lack of cast speed we have. We might still swap the Flame Wall, but not sure yet. Um... Yep, got some better gloves. Still no damage gloves. Uh, same amulet. Amulet is another big one we have to recraft for some uh, some fire multi or just in general damage over time multiplier. Uh, I did end up picking up a new scepter. I got this for 25 chaos. Basically, it had uh, I was searching on PoE trade for double multi. Now you might not be able to find stuff like this anymore, but I found double multi with prefix open, so I went and just crafted increased uh, fire damage. And then I had a harvest for elemental quality, so I swapped that on. Now for Righteous Fire, I went through 14 Essences of Horror uh, to craft this helmet. So they were four, or 12C each at the time, 12 to 13C. The helmet base is item level 83. You want minimum item level 75. Um, I think 82 is a sweet spot for item level though, because you can hit the level 20 burn. Now, I personally do not like running Conk Effect unless I get lucky and get a Conk uh, with burn damage on my helmet with the essence then i'm then i'm okay with it but right now this is my aoe without awakened in koe so it's super nice conk is gonna pull that to like here um with awakened in koe it's not as bad right or even just in koe um i prefer awakened in koe of course but i'm running righteous fire efficacy ink aoe and elemental focus all right with that being said we're gonna go ahead and get to it the plus one gems is a prefix that you can find from unveiling in Jun uh, over here. This is where I got it. So the ideal goal is you use your essence. You want to try to get a burn damage suffix. So you have prefix open to craft, uh, you know, AOE. Of course, this could be much better if I had like higher life roll and etc. But yeah, you get the point. We're going to jump into a quick T12 map. Um, I did put some sextants on, so it should be a little bit of juice. Right over here. I've also dropped the cast one damage taken for wave of conviction. Sorry, other way around. I dropped the cast one damage taken wave of conviction for shield charge just so I can kind of clear a bit faster. Now, incorporating a flammability on hit ring is still going to be um, just massive damage for clearing because I still don't even have a curse right now. So I think the next big one is I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to go ahead and a little loud. There we go and get a flammability synthesized ring but before i go for the flammability synthesized ring i want to try to get the hybrid movement speed plus onslaught on kill on boots so what that'll do is that'll allow me to basically drop my death's rush entirely get a good chaos resist ring uh then i get onslaught from my boots um and then i can get basically free flammability on hit right so that's kind of cool flammability will not trigger too often but at least on bosses and stuff when i shield charge it will kind of trigger there remember that we are still pretty tanky as well we do die occasionally but we're really tanky 
6.7k molten shell with 5.5k life and 2.6k es not to mention the like absolute bonkers um arm well i guess our armor is not bonkers right now but it's pretty good we're at like 30k yeah 30k armor with buffs on without buffs it's like a little bit less like 22k i think standing still that can go up as well you know with some good gear Hang over here I think one of the next setups is trying to squeeze in the Tempered by War setup. Uh, the Tempered by War setup will just help a lot because we still need to mitigate against the elemental damage. So speaking of the elemental damage, I have been getting a lot of players asking me about Saffle's Frame versus Rise of the Phoenix. Now, in the past, I would never, never, ever, ever suggest Saffle's Frame when you're like just starting to map. And the reason why is in the past, armor was not really a very reliable source of mitigation um and saffle's frame completely deletes your physical attack block therefore when you are mapping every single monster you're running melee into the face on is guaranteed hitting you with just using a standard rise of the phoenix you're still benefiting off of 24 percent of your actual block which is still really good you are successfully mitigating 24 percent of all hits that actually occur to your character i do not have the right essence those bad no corruptions um so that's kind of why when you get into late game maps and you have very good sources of mitigation that's i think when saffles kind of is a bit better of a choice also in a scenario where you're just like bossing for bossing uh it's a much more controlled environment you don't just have like random awakener mobs flying in and sirius isn't just popping in with this die beam not that that should, stuff actually does damage but you get the point um you know it's really up to you i would try it um, I just I haven't really gotten around to testing out Saffle's Frame Disco, but I also really just like Rise of the Phoenix until I get a decently crafted uh, shield, but I'm not sure when that is going to be either, because that's going to be for, like, project damage. Okay. There we go. That pretty much concludes it with the update. I still have to redo my flasks. They're like the same flasks from when I started day one. I just have been too lazy to uh, swap them out. Yep, that's pretty much about it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below to go through my links real fast. We got combustion, shield charge, faster attacks. This is not super reliable, but I have 70% chance to apply it. We got flame dash, purity of elements, arcane surge, determination. Uh, Infernal Cry, Molten Shell, Life Tap, Enduring Cry. Infernal Cry is really only good for like when I'm doing Harvest, I can insta pop the packs. When I do Incursion, I can insta pop the packs. So it's like a situational swap. Otherwise, I just use like my Duration Gem for uh, longer Molten Shell. I've got Blood Rage, Summon Skitterbot, and Blank here because I don't want to spend currency uh, rechroming this since it's corrupted. And then we went over everything else. So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you like the update video, feel free to. Hit that, sh that like button, and don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, you can also catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Uh, I'm a little tired, so I apologize if I ever sound irritated. I don't I don't mean to take any of my annoyance out on you guys. It can just be, uh, you know, it, it just is a massive toll to uh, answer questions all day long. So thank you for dealing with me, boys. Catch you guys all later. Take care, everybody.